Hello class. Today we're going to talk about project two, which is colorizing a black and white photo. So I have uploaded the project specs on your project folder. So let's go over the specifications. So the objective is the student will render a clean, accurate selection using the selection tools in Photoshop, rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, lasso, polygon lasso, and, mag and magnetic lasso. The student will choose a black and white image for colorization. The project requirements is um, the size of the image that you choose. So I have uploaded a, um, a zipped file of three images. So just download that and double click it and you will unzip it and choose one of those images. Um, I have also um, uploaded a website which shows some examples and we'll go over them right now. So the directions is choose one of the images uploaded to your project folder, open the image in Photoshop, change the mode from grayscale to RGB, and use the Photoshop tools to adjust each color to create a realistic color image. Okay, so the project will be due next Friday. Okay, so this is the, the website and uh, it's a collection of photos that were black and white. It has the before and after and after I saw that I thought I was pretty inspired and we have been working with the same photo for so many years and I thought let's change this up a little bit. So I chose different photos that we can work with so I'm giving you a choice. And I just think some of these are very amazing how they managed to make them look so real. So this will be a challenge, but I think it will be a lot of fun. And you get to learn a lot of the tools in Photoshop. This one is amazing. I really love the colors on this one. I can't believe it came from a black and white and they colorized it. So I encourage you to go and look at the site and uh, get inspired as I was. And now let's go to Photoshop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open one of the files. So you go to File, Open. And um, it's the I Stop Black and White. And I'm going to go with this one. Okay, so I'm going to move me to the side here. Alright, so... Let's say, let's start off with um, the car, okay? So the first thing you want to do is, is add a layer. So in this project, we're going to start working with layers, which is very important. Okay, so what you do is when you have your layers window up, you will see some icons at the bottom. You have a trash can. This one is the new layer icon. This is a folder. This one right here is to create a fill or it has some other features as well. This one is a mask, which we will use later. And this one is to add um, effects. And this one is to link. Okay, so what we're gonna use is the one on, we're gonna use the one on the sec second one to the right. So if you click on that, you will create a new layer. And what I really suggest you do is start naming your layers because if you don't name them, it gets lost and it's just better time management for you. So you double click it and we're going to start off with the car. So you name it car. So um, I forgot to say that the mode it's on grayscale and if I try to add color it's not gonna let me so what you wanna do is go to image mode and see how it's on grayscale you wanna make sure that you're in RGB CMYK would also work but today we're gonna choose RGB RGB stands for red green and black um, don't flatten because I made a layer otherwise it was just gonna make everything into one 
So what we're going to do is, remember the last uh, tool that we used, uh, it was the polygon lasso tool. You want to click on that. And if you want to get closer, there's a magnifying, there's a zoom tool, it's a magnifying glass. You want to click on that and kind of draw an imaginary, well, if you click and drag, it'll just do that kind of stuff. But but what you can also do, if you hold down the space bar, you can move stuff around. Okay. You can also do command minus and plus or control minus and plus if you're in a PC. So um, you get the polygon lasso and you just click away. Well, you would do a much neater job. I am just kind of showing you really quickly how you would do this. So I'm doing a really sloppy job, but you are going to be much neater. Oh, it did that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the lasso. And if I hold down shift, I can add this part right here okay so I'm going to create um, I'm gonna use the bucket tool um, so you want to make sure that you're not on the actual image otherwise you're gonna mess up you don't want to do this okay uh, and if you make a mistake, you can do Control Z or Command Z. That will be undo, or you can go to Edit and uh, step backwards. Or there's also the History palette, which will allow you to go as far back as you want. You can go back and forth. Okay, so that's your history. So it allows you to be a little bit more flexible. So you want to make sure you're in the car layer. That's where you you want it to look like that. So if you want to deselect, you do Command D or Control D, and um, then what you use is this uh, uh, drop down right here where it says Normal. You want to choose, let's say, uh, Darken. Um, you can go down the list and see which one you like the best, but I love this one. I just I love the the things that it how it makes things look, but it doesn't look that realistic. So maybe you want to lower the opacity. The opacity is like a transparency, so to make it a little bit more believable. Okay, so um, next, um, let's say now that you want to color the sky. You can use different tools. You can also use a paintbrush if you wanted to. So um, you add another layer, double click, and say uh, sky. Okay. So for my sky, let's just say I'm gonna choose this um, purple color, I know. The sky is not that color, but just wanted to use. You can do basically whatever you want. So let's say I'm choosing this purple color, right? And just painting over it. You, you're going to be a little bit more precise, right? I'm just kind of showing you a demonstration. Okay, so let's just say that I painted my sky purple. Okay. So now I go and and I want to see maybe color what that looks like and if I lower the opacity a little bit maybe add some blue I don't know you can mix and match see what colors work the best it's up to you I've had some people do some doesn't have to make sense you can have fun with this but um, you will you will have other opportunities to to get more expressive and creative in the future. So um, 
I do kind of, I, I don't want you guys to get too crazy. And, and uh, like I said before, if uh, there's an image of a person, uh, don't make it look everything in good taste, okay? So um, that is this tutorial. So like I said, the history is also very important for you to know um, because it goes back it, like the changes that you've made so the history only goes back so far so if you've already made a mistake and it's a long time ago it's probably not going to go back that far so what I sometimes do if I'm in a good place there's a little drop down right here and you take a snapshot and there you know that you can go back to that part if you continue working on something you can always go back to that snapshot so that helps a lot now um, another thing is um, that you can also use the eraser the eraser uh, kinda works like a brush if you use your brackets you can make it bigger and you can also start erasing stuff if you make a mistake okay so um, but you have to get really comfortable that you're in the right layer. That's going to be crucial because you might start, some people, and I made the same mistake. Sometimes I'm in the actual image and once you start messing with the image, once you start going in here, deleting stuff, it's not going to let you go back. You've already lost those pixels. You've lost that. So, um... I suggest that you you know it practice makes perfect so you just keep on working on that and uh, see where you go um, just you're just gonna get better the more that you try it so when you're done you go to f actually when you're done go to file and save and for yourself it's always going to create a PSD a Photoshop file so you save it under whatever file name you want to give it and that's going to allow you to go back and work on your layers and add this and add that but once you flatten it let's say you make it a JPEG you can't go back and it's going to have layers the only way it's going to have its layers if it's a Photoshop file or maybe an EPS but let's just stick with Photoshop a PSD okay um, but to upload so we can critique it or we can look at it on uh, D2L you are going to save file save for web and uh, if it's too big uh, sometimes here in the percent you can say 50 percent of the actual size so it's gonna be um, half the size and you can say JPEG if that's the best one and and then you save it but right now I'm gonna cancel that so once you save that, you want to go to D2L and uh, upload it. Okay, so I'm going to have a, um, a discussion where we're going to talk about uh, projects. Not, I'm not going to have a discussion for every project because some of these projects are going to be very technical. So, but this one, you know, it's nice to share and see what other students have done. So um, you see here when you're ready to submit to a uh, discussion, you'll see these tools. Well, there's one right here at the far right that, um, that has three little dots. If you click on that, it'll give you more options. So there is um, there's a bold, italics, underline, that's all for text. But if you see here, um, this icon it looks like a little mountain with a little sun at the top insert image if you click on that you can insert your JPEG and that's where you hit upload and you find your photo that you want and uh, you upload that and it's gonna ask you to name it so just name it whatever you want to name it and then hit done okay so that's how we're gonna do that and if you have any questions, just let me know. All right, you take care.